your dream is to go cruising like Pev and I, then the one thing that you really need to be able to do is to just enjoy the sailing. Just enjoy the silence, the quietness, and not have to have 999 things happening at once to be excited. Just to just sail and be calm. Salty Lass. She has completed her um, challenge which was to go through the Grinning Canal um, and I tell you now she was absolutely filthy. Beverly took all day, well she didn't take all day but uh, she took a couple of hours uh, cleaning her uh, on the outside because she was just covered in lots and lots of slime and um, green water from the canal. Um, when um, I was um, tying up um, Salty Lass, Beverly was most insistent that um, I tied the lines at 45 degrees. Um, and basically it's because of this. So Beverly wanted it at 45 degrees so that um, she could control the boat forward and backwards as well as uh, side to side. Um, if you have it further back, where the canal people tend to put it, um, yeah, they tend to put it much further back. Um, you've got a lot of forward and backward motion, but you've got very little side to side motion. And to control it side to side, um, you have to put a lot of strain on the ropes and on the cleats and on the cleats. Um, so that's why Beverly wanted it at 45 degrees. So one of the things that we, Beverly and I found really handy was our walkie talkies, which we got from, for less than 20 quid from Amazon. Uh, but it means that, um, we can chat on these quite gaily to each other about what we're doing with regard to ropes, etc. Um, without, uh, clogging up, um, marine radio so they're quite useful the other absolute must and i've lost it already what did you do with the tea tree oil i took it off you because i didn't know you were going to use it i was going to use it on the toes oh. <laughs> the other essential thing that we found really useful is tea tree oil uh, because um, as you go across the Crinan Canal, the midges are absolutely horrendous. But midges um, and noceums, I think is what the Americans call them, really can't stand the smell of tea tree oil. Um, so basically we just sort of like uh, dabbed that on our clothes um, and it really kept the midges away. And that's a really good idea. Well, this is the last lock, or is the first lock if you're coming, uh, if you're going north. But this is the last lock for us. Um, after the lock, you have a bridge to nav navigate, which does get moved for you. And there's Salty Lass over there. She looks good, and she is looking, really looking forward to going to sea because the sea beckons. So then, Gaynor, where are we and why? Well, we're in uh, Loch Tarbert, one of the many Loch Tarberts that there are in around um, 
Scotland, but this is Loch Tarbert in Upper Loch Fine. Lower Loch Fine, actually. Lower Loch Fine, Lower Loch Fine. But anyway, um, we were doing a beautiful little sail, gorgeous sail. Uh, looking really forward to a good long sail, but then the wind just came from nowhere, just went ridiculous. We got into a force eight and uh, because we could run for cover we did do mm -hmm. and uh, what was our moment of glory can you recall not too sure what our moment of glory was. i think our moment of glory was having a reef in the jenny and still doing six knots oh yeah 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 we did have a reef in the jenny and doing six knots Bev and I decided that we were going to have a little treat today. Because we're back no, in salty water. I've no idea. Oh, is that why we're having a treat? Because we're on back on salty water? But I have to say, these steaks from the uh, local butchers in um, Tarbert. Tarbert. One of the Tarberts. One of the many Tarberts. This is the Lower Loch Fine Tarbert. But look at that dinner. Oh my goodness. That is gorgeous. And the more observant among you will have noticed we've come back to the old fashioned method of having a chip down. Well, we've just left Tarbert where we ran to in a stormy weather, which is over there. And uh, Tarbert's a lovely little marina, we really enjoyed it. Um, Everything all close in and nice. It's a much better day today and um, we're able to get the seals up quite quickly and we're making a very very pleasant five knots down Loch Fine. So the boat is just sitting nicely and we're just going. after a really really nice sail um we left um Loch Tarbert, uh, the little Loch Tarbert in Lower Loch Fine this morning and we did a cracking sail um I reckon we sailed about a tide uh, which is about six hours and um we're now in um logs uh, which we came to when we were on our boat search. The boat we looked at is still here for sale. Oh, okay. So, um, so one of the boats we looked at was is still here. And one of the ones that was for sale in Troon is here now, two slips up from us. Okay, so we'll have a look at that. But, um, but yeah, so um, we're here in Largs, and um, the main reason I've come here is I have got a tiny, tiny rip in my uh, Genoa. It is about two inches long, I reckon, um, but we're going to get it fixed. And I have to say, I feel like we're getting a quite a good deal and getting it fixed for 20 quid plus VAT. So as far as I'm concerned, that's a heck of a good price. So basically 2,000 quid's worth of sale, 20 quid's worth of repair. Yeah, it's a no brainer. It's not, very, it's not a very big rip, I admit that, but let's do it now while it isn't a very big rip we dropped our genoa and used a halyard to lift it into a trolley and wheeled it and our spur sails up to saturn sails uh, i'm greg pitt from saturn sails so um beverly and i have just had our sails uh, our spare sails checked out and what did you find about our spare sails 
Um, basically, spare sails were um, they were in relatively poor condition, <laughs> <laughs> which is um, fine. Sorry about that. Um, but they're um, serviceable sails, so usable as a as a spare as opposed to an everyday sail. Um, useful to get yourself out of a, a pitfall if something tears. Um, the material quality maybe wasn't the best, but that kind of works as a spare sail as opposed to something you're going to use every day. Um, um, what you, what we were discussing the main sail, um, and we were you were basically just saying that uh, maybe ditch that one. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So what what's the reasoning for that then? I think the um, well the main sail is probably the the poorest of condition out of the two of them. Um, generally, what you find is if, if if you tear a sail, the worst case happens, it's normally in the worst of conditions. Um, and obviously changing a mainsail or doing any work like that on a rig is not something you're going to undertake in, in bad heavy weather conditions. So worst case scenario, if you do tear a mainsail, it usually gets dropped onto the boom, tied up, and wait till you get to a port somewhere, and then you can actually do something about it. Um, whereas if you have a spare headsail, that is something that could be changed relatively easily. Um, and is, is probably more useful, less risk involved in using that as a spare sail than there is the amount of work involved in changing a, a mainsail over, especially with sails that you have a fully battened mainsail, which just adds to the bulk and the work that in, is involved. Yeah, so basically um, it means that uh, for us that we're going to ditch our... Uh, spare mainsail and give ourselves a bit more space yes. <laughs> in our, underneath our... <laughs> a bit more space in the lockers yeah, yeah. <laughs> a bit more space in the lockers yeah well that yeah. sounds like good advice so uh, if you need spares just go for a spare uh head sail that's the easiest one to keep as a spare yeah. yeah right and that sounds like good advice to me okay thank you all right yeah. thanks to fast service from saturn sales we hoisted our genoa back onto the furler that yes. night and left for our next port a big thumbs up from us for the guys from Saturn. Thanks fellas.